Okay, so now we're going to talk about constant acceleration case. Okay, so we already we already found that the uh, definition of average acceleration is defined as delta v over delta t. So if we are going to, uh, you know, if the average velocity is uh, average acceleration is a constant, uh, I'm sorry, if we are dealing with a constant acceleration, basically you will have the graph like this. So you have acceleration as a function of time, and when you have a constant acceleration, it means that when you graph it, you're just going to have a straight line because your acceleration does not change. And that acceleration, so your, so this acceleration is also going to, the value is also going to be equal to the average acceleration, right? Because it does not change. So you can basically take this to be and set that equal to A. At any value, your A is just the average acceleration. So we just drop the uh, AVG, and that's delta V over delta T. So let's say when time equals to zero, there's no initial velocity, or we can take our uh, initial velocity to be V0, okay? And then let's say at a later time, we call that T. The velocity now becomes V. So I'm just going to do that. So when, let me see. So let's say, this is t and this is velocity. When t equals to zero, when t equals to zero, you had, this is very bad. So, all right, anyway, t equals to zero, you have velocity that is v0. When t equals to t, you have velocity, we call that v. How about that? So we have that. So we can actually just plug into here and see what the answer, what, or, you know, what does that give us. So you have delta v over delta t. Your delta v now is the final, uh, final velocity minus initial velocity. And your delta t will just be the final time minus initial time. So what we have here is that you have v minus v0, initial velocity, over t. And rearrange this, so your a is equal to this. If we rearrange that, multiply t on both sides, and then, the re and then I'll put the, uh, the v on the left-hand side. So you have your velocity that's equal to initial velocity plus a t. So this is your first equation. The first equations of uh, equations of motion. This is based on when you have a, you know, a special case when the acceleration is a constant. So final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Okay. Now let's look at let's look at another equations that uh, introduced uh, you know in the book. So let's say the average acceleration. The average velocity, we know that the average uh, velocity is defined as x2, x2 minus x1. So utilize the same uh, terminology. So initial position is x0, the final position, let's say, is x. So you have the final, uh, the final position minus initial position and over the time. So we can actually, uh, you know, rearrange this. And what we have here is that your x position at final position is equal to the initial position plus the average uh, average uh, velocity times time. Okay, so what is our average velocity? Average velocity then, the average velocity can also be is expressed just taking the sum of the initial. Let's say if you average those divided by two, that gives you the average velocity. So we have v naught plus v. Okay, and then what we're going to do is that we're going to replace this, this V with this expression. So what we have is X is equals X initial position, and then plus you have one half, and then V naught plus V, and then times T. Okay, so what we have here is, uh, is this. And then we're going to replace this V with that expression. So what we have here is that you have your initial position plus one half. We we'll multiply now, so one half v, uh, you know, initial velocity, and then plus one half. Uh, I'm missing the t here, so I'm going to. I have my t here, and then I have my v. So my v. You know what? Let me just do this. One half, and then you have v naught. And then plus your v. Your v is another v naught plus a t, and then times your time. And then we're going to rearrange this. So you have your x naught, and then plus you have two initial velocity, and divided by two, that gives you just one, and then times t, 
and then plus one half a t squared. So this is your second equation of motion. You'll find they are very handy whenever you do the problems. This is the equation you're going to use a lot. This is another equation you're going to uh, a lot. This associate the final velocity to the uh, the initial velocity if there's an uh, you know acceleration. And then this associate, uh, you know, this will enable you to find out the position of the, uh, of the object at any given time. If you know the initial velocity, if you know the acceleration. So it's a quadratic equation here. Uh, I mean, basically, it's proportional to 1 half at squared. Okay? And uh, so the other thing is that we can also, we can also, uh, you know, uh, let's see what we have here. So that's one equation there. So if you look at, if you graph, if you graph position versus time, when the object has the acceleration, when the object has the acceleration, which means that it is proportional to t squared, what does that mean? It means that when you graph position versus time, you're not going to get a straight line because straight line will be when there is no acceleration. But now you have a non-zero acceleration. Your graph is more like a parabolic, so it's something like that. You sh this kind of curve that you would expect. Okay, and so, so what about uh, you know uh, the other equations? The other equation is also very useful. Is that uh, this is equation one and equation two? The, another equation that that comes very handy is that that involves the uh, you know the uh, final velocity and the initial velocity. And when you do not have the time information, this is the equation to use when there is no when time information is not given. And that is, which I'm not going to derive, the final velocity square is equal to initial velocity square and then plus two times the acceleration and then times the displacement. Now of course the displacement would just be the final position minus initial position. So in the book, it gave, uh, it gave you a lot of equations, but the most, uh, the three most used, uh, useful ones are this one, and also this one, which I'm going to rewrite it here, and then that one. So you have the x, that's equal to s0, plus v0t, and then plus 1 half a t squared. So as long as you, for every problem, these three equations will be sufficient enough to do the problem. This is especially uh, you know, useful when uh, you don't have the time information. And this is, when, this is straightforward. If you have the initial velocity, if you have the acceleration, and this, of course, relates the uh, two velocities, and that also comes very handy. Okay? Now, um, so for the average velocity, you can also use that, or, uh, you know, but then uh, uh, most of the time, you'll, you'll be able to find instantaneous velocity instead of average velocity. Okay? So these three equations, we call that equations, equations of motion, okay? That's Newtonian, uh, you know. So that basically tells you that if you're given uh, the, the velocity, the acceleration, then you pretty much know, you know, the object the, at the next instance, what the object will be, and, you know, if you know the time information, okay? So... How do we get, uh, so this is basically based on the, uh, the constant acceleration, we can actually deduce that. And uh, the other thing is that how do we, how, you know, using calculus, you actually can deduce this you know, easily as well. So I'm just going to briefly go over that since uh, this is a calculus-based uh, you know, course. So, um, so let me just erase this. And you'll, see, you'll find that you know, using calculus, you get exactly the same results. And um, so, so where to start? That's say because our uh, you know our condition here is that we assume acceleration is a constant. So let's say the definition of acceleration is this: is dv over dt, right? So you can actually multiply dt on both sides. So you have your a dt that's equal to dv, and then you're going to integrate that. Okay, if you are, you know, if you're not sure about this, that's fine. This is just for your information, because um, I mean, this is uh, you're just learning physics, and also the, your math, you just learn your calculus. So we don't expect you to, to uh, you know, to uh, be an expert in that. So uh, anyway, so this is the acceleration, which is constant. You can just move the outside, and then you have your dt, and that's equal to your dv, and that's say the range. 
let's say this is from zero to t, and this is from v naught to v. So you have your, you, ha you can have your a times t, because when you integrate that, that's just, you know, this differentiation and integration, they uh, kind of like cancel each other. So you have acceleration times time, and you have your v minus v naught. So you basically get the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus a times t. So you can see that it's not as difficult. It's, you can just do that, and then you got the, uh, exactly the same result. Okay? And uh, now for, the, uh, for, the, uh, uh, for this equation, that's exactly, you can do exactly the same thing. Definition of velocity, instantaneous velocity, is this. dx over dt. So we're going to use exactly the same procedure, multiply dt on both sides, and then integrate that. Okay, now, the difference between this and that is that, in this case, acceleration is a constant, so you, you can move the outside. But here, velocity, the velocity, here's a variable. You can't move it, move it, move it outside because velocity, which is found, is the, equal to this. So what you're going to do is I replace this V with this, and then dt. And that gives you dx. And your dx, of course, is from x0 to x. And your variable here, t, is from 0 to t. So let's see what we have here. So after you do, so on the left-hand side, you have initial velocity now is a constant. Acceleration is also a constant. So rearrange this. You have break it into like two terms. So you have v, v0 dt, and then plus you have your at dt, and that's equal to your dx. So this gives you v0 t, and this gives you one half a t squared because d, d, uh, t dt that gives you uh, t squared, and this is equal to x, and then uh, minus x naught. So we arrange this, you get yeah, your x is equal to initial position plus initial velocity times time, and plus one half a t squared. So you can see that using calculus, you get exactly the same thing. And this is only applicable when you're dealing with a constant acceleration. And I just want to emphasize again that this is just for your information. Because, I mean, I thought this is cool. I can just, uh, you know, let you know uh, how to do this. Now, probably, uh, you probably won't uh, fully appreciate this, uh, you know, at the moment. But then uh, in, uh, in, uh, in one year after you're confident with your math, then when you go come back here, uh, you know, revisit the, uh, uh, the material, you'll find that it's much, then you understand what's going on here. Okay? So this is when you have a constant acceleration. These are the equations of motion for constant, for constant acceleration. And we, every day, we experience a constant acceleration case. And what is that? For example, let's say if I, you know, let's say if I have an object here and I'm just going to let it, I'm just going to release it. When I release it, what's going to, what happens? And you saw that when I release it, it just fell down. Why is, why is it coming down to the floor? And it, it is coming down to the floor because it experienced a gravitational force that exerted by the Earth. So we are human, we are uh, you know, Earth-bound. It's not because we like to stay on Earth. It's because Earth actually uh, you know, exerted a gravitational force on Earth. So we are uh, Earth-bound, OK? Now, with that acceleration, with that force, there's acceleration. And that acceleration is called the gravitational acceleration. And that gravitational acceleration is a constant. So that g value, and we call that g, okay? And we call that free fall acceleration. So the free fall acceleration We use a symbol of G to indicate that the free fall acceleration. So what is the free fall acceleration? The free fall acceleration, uh, if we draw a diagram, this is the Earth, and this is the object. Of course, that's, uh, you know, um, so that's an object. So it has experienced a, a downward, you know, it's always attracted to the Earth, to the center of the Earth. So G is downward, 
even if you're here, it is toward the, toward the Earth, toward the Earth, because it is a attractive, attractive force, and it's always going, uh, you know, toward the, uh, toward the, uh, the Earth. So this is your G value, the main shoe. Again, G acceleration is a vector, so it is a vector. Now, with the main shoe, basically, it's just 9.8, and the unit is, oh, I forgot to mention that the, uh, the unit for acceleration is meter per second squared, okay? And uh, so, so your acceleration is equal to, if you do, uh, express that in, uh, in vector notation, that would be negative 9.8. Uh, 9.8, and uh, downward. So uh, I think we're uh, kind of jumping ahead. Just okay. I'm just going to say that downward, or toward centered. Okay, and it's equal to negative g. All right. So so this is a free fall acceleration. So and based on this, because free fall acceleration, the the value is a constant. So. This equation are applicable as well. So if you so when uh, whenever you do problems and you when you uh, you know uh, uh, pertaining to the uh, the free fall uh, you know acceleration, you can use this set of equation. Although you have to uh, you know your a here. So now let's say for example for the first equation, the final velocity is equal to initial velocity, and then and then plus so then your a here is negative g, so it becomes negative two g. And then delta, and I'm going to replace x with y because it's in the, in the vertical direction. So I use the symbol y. Likewise, for the second equation, the final velocity is equal to initial velocity. Now your a is your negative g, and then your t stays the same. And the last one, remember, we're using the y uh, in, uh, in place of x. So you have final position is equal to initial position, and then plus initial velocity times time, and then minus one half, and then g t squared. So this are the equation, as you can see, directly from, taken from that equation, except that now I replace our a with negative g, and everything stays the same, because uh, you know, this is just a special case when you have a constant acceleration, and then g uh, you know, is, a, is a constant value. Okay, so that concludes. Uh, this chapter, and so whenever you do, uh, you know, problems and this kind of when you, uh, whenever you deal with a vector, you have to define your coordinates, and then uh, make sure that your coordinate is consistent with the uh, the definition. So this is positive, positive, everything below and leftward is negative, negative. This is especially, uh, you know, comes uh, handy when you're dealing with the uh, the free fall acceleration. You have to define your coordinate. Anything above the origin. And to the right is positive. Anything below is negative. Take for example, if you have an object, and you and it's moving downward, that velocity you would say that the velocity is equal to negative two. For example, meter per second. You don't just say that it is two. It is negative two because it is downward. Now, if you have an object that's upward, you say that the velocity that say is same as two, but it's upward, then it's two meter per second. So that's a difference when you do problems. Because all this, uh, you know, all this, you know, the the sign has to be taken care of. Whether it's upward, downward, leftward, rightward, those signs has to be, uh, you know, properly taken care of. Okay, alrighty.